And welcome to episode number 80 of the Wrestling Burn. 80? 80, 80 Holy episodes! Christ! We are your hosts, Parksy and the Zombie. Sup, sup! Back again for another week of fun wrestling news and whatever the fuck we want to talk about. Yes. Anything we want to <laughs> talk about. So, uh, I was telling you I had a surprise for you. Right. Um So CM Punk did his, his second podcast with Cabana yesterday, called Cabana. I, I haven't listened to it yet. I didn't listen to the first one, so I can't you, really say anything. You have to dedicate your for like two hours of your life to listening to that podcast. Yes, I have to. Maybe I can download it. Somewhere. It's on YouTube. Oh, it is. Yeah. All right, so I'll have to listen to it. Um, so I don't really know everything Punk said on this podcast. This isn't the surprise, by the way. This second one, but um, if you listen to Stone Cold's podcast, Stone Cold, which I thought was. Great. Again, I haven't listened to that one either. You, I wanted to, but one. I didn't get around to it. Um, like going in, I was like, "Oh, it's gonna be on the network." Like, I think it's gonna be like. See, I thought they were gonna edit character stuff. I and... thought they were gonna edit Stone Cold <clears throat> from asking questions. Nope. It was completely like actual people, and Stone Cold came right out and said, "All right, Vince, give me a yes or no answer. You want to talk about CM Punk?" And, he, and Vince kind of avoided it. He just said. I'm sorry for the way things went down. He did admit that Punk did get his papers on his wedding day, but said that was a screw up with the mail. I don't know. He, I don't know how much I believe that. Yeah. Um. Did they send him? Did they send him the papers during, in regular mail, or was it a, like a certified letter that it, they knew it was going to be delivered that day? Uh he, he didn't go into that much detail. He says that he doesn't even send the letters. It's the talent relations people. Yeah. And if they don't like CM Punk, then oh well. But um, he was like, yep, uh, I publicly apologize for how that went down. Ba -da 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 -da. And the only thing I really know from the podcast yesterday Punk did is he basically said that was bullshit. He basically was like, oh, Vince McMahon's trying to save face because I kind of like took him to school on it and called him out for it but now um punk had mentioned in the first podcast that him and alberto del rio had clauses in their contracts a non-compete clause with the ufc like you know how a lot of times like ww wwe will release a guy and it's like 90 days before you can go sign with like tna or anybody else right in del rio and cm punk's contract ufc was one of those companies that was mentioned oh they couldn't go work for him? yeah why would the hell would they go work for him? well both of them do mma like full-time or like are accomplished and like know what they're doing and stuff right um but as i was walking into the studio del I, rio del rio looked like he would get his ass kicked if he went down del rio's right. actually really good i guess <laughs> he but, doesn't um, seem like the type to be able to take a punch but um dana white said Hey, if CM Punk wants to talk, I know his 90 days are up soon. Once he, if I, he's like, I have no problem talking with him. And that, like, good for Dana White, first of all, realizing that obviously there's a market there of people that want to see CM Punk. They've, they've talked before. Cause well, you know, the Green Ranger wants to get into the ring with CM Punk. That's right. That would be a big pay per view CM if that Punk ever happened. CM Punk is a bad dude too. Like if you. I don't know if, like, you, uh, you've you seen any of his updates. I follow, like, BJ Penn and stuff. Yeah. Who uh, posts a lot of stuff from his website. He has a, a video of Punk and um one of the Gracies doing jiu-jitsu together. Punk's good. He is not a joke. He he knows what he's doing. Yeah. So does the Green Ranger. Yeah, but I trust. <clears throat> CM Punk we trust. Um, uh, Green Ranger also does MMA fight, does UFC fights and stuff like that. He just did one the other day. Did he? Not against CM Punk, though. No, whoever it was, he won, but he's, he seems a little fat. I think it would be out of the weight class. There, would, there are two different I'm, weight classes. I'm sure they would both drop, because Punk is 200-plus pounds right now. Yeah, but the Green it. Ranger looks like he's about more than that. Hmm. Yeah, I don't he's know. probably about my size. Ooh. Okay, yeah. fair enough. You made it sound like you were fat, you know. 420. <laughs> You're not B. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. 
But yeah, that was uh that was my big punk news. Yeah, but Punk no, was Punk was saying he's okay with the fans chanting his name during the shows. Good. Yeah, as he should be, like. <laughs> Just not his wife and friends. He doesn't want his wife and friends chanting his name during the shows. <laughs> what the hell? That's what? all about. Yeah, that's kind of stupid. Oh, you know, because he got all... He, even on the first podcast, he was talking about... Remember when Heyman showed up in Chicago to see him play music? Oh, when music? he... When he in, yeah, yeah, yeah. He okay. said he had... He he was kind of irked about that, but then when Stephanie went out and was calling him a quitter in front of his hometown and stuff, yeah. he's like... At that point, he said at that point when I heard that, it was basically just like, fuck it, and didn't right. care. And I guess when... And they finally got back in contact with him. Punk was like, I mean, yeah, if you're going to go back to Chicago and say that, that all those things you uh, you said about me were a lie and that I was actually fired. <laughs> right. Went off on this whole thing like he just wanted them to make it right. But, uh, no, and uh, back to the Austin podcast. He, I was surprised. I've never listened to one of his podcasts before. Yeah. He's actually, he does a good job. He asked the questions that you want to know about. He got Vince to say some things that I was actually uh, surprised about. Vince was, like, talking about Cesaro and stuff, saying how he didn't think he had that it factor, and... Right. It was, it was like, complete non... Like, out-of-character people for both of them. Right. So... What the hell? I mean, good for them... And a lot of people now are saying that actually Austin's podcast should be a WWE Network regular. Really? It w- it was well done. Well, yeah, he. I don't know who produces his freaking podcast, but. I don't know, but I'm I'm telling you, you would have appreciated it if you go that and watch fan it. Fan podcast or what the hell it's called? What? Fan podcast. What are you talking about? I don't know. It's uh, it's on Twitter all the time. It's called Fan Podcast or oh. Podcast Fan or something like that. I don't know. They talk about all the po- they don't talk about our podcast, but they talk about our podcast a lot. But um, yeah, po- uh, Austin did a great job with it. He, I mean, he always has big name people. Yeah. But I guess after the punk, after the first punk, uh, Colt Cabana podcast, anybody that was, um. AJ, that's the re- they found out Punk was going on the po- uh, the podcast. That's why she she lost so fast. Everybody's on, everybody associated with Punk is on their shit list now. So Vince McMahon apologized to CM Punk. Yeah, he did. Oh, yeah. Vince Vince kind of seemed. I mean, I'm not sure. Obviously, he knows how to act a little bit, and he's been on TV. He's not a great actor. I'm not saying. Oh yeah, Vince was like. Well, Vince is an actor. He's just a, he is what he is, yeah. you know? But he he seemed kind of upset. He wasn't happy that lawyers had to get involved, it seemed like. But I also think that was him trying to save face a little bit. Right. But no, um, basically everything Punk said about Stephanie and Triple H was confirmed. Like, they're rip shit now. They don't want to ever do business with him again. Which, first of all, that's fucking stupid at their part. Yeah, they can't he's, say that. He's a gold mine for money. He. That's like documented. saying he's the only person to outsell Cena. That's just Stone Cold. That's just like that. saying back in the day, oh, WWE will never work with Hulk Hogan again. Yeah. You know, for jumping ship or or Ultimate guys. Warrior. Yeah. Or the only one. Oh, another thing, which uh, they did bring the Warrior back and yep. he did die. And. Because even I guess Austin more. was like, so do you think we'll ever see Punk in a WWE ring again? He goes, Vince was like, I really hope so. And Austin was asking about Macho Man, actually. Yeah. Asked if Macho Man was going to be in the Hall of Fame. Vince gave a definite yes. Didn't say, he said it might not be this year, but sometime soon. Really? Yep. Well, that would be interesting. So there you go. Apparently, we well, you figure... Vince is still in charge. Yeah. Anyway, you look at it, Vince is still in charge. Stephanie has a few more. He he. Vince does a lot of things. Like he's still head of. He's like creative. He oversees creative and everything. Right. But um, a lot of like talent relations now is Triple H, actually. And Stephanie has a bunch. Do you think Vince really would like to see uh, Shane back in the in charge? He asked about Shane too. Yeah. Austin. 
the way Vince made it sound was Shane left the company at first because he wanted to spend time with his kids and he was already going into business with a bunch of other people. But the way he made it sound like Vince and Shane had a big blowout. Yeah. A direction and... That type of thing. I, he didn't even say if it was direction or what. Just made it sound like they had a blowout, and Shane's in Japan right now, just... I thought he was with UFC. No. He's not with UFC anymore? He was with UFC. Not that Vince mentioned, at least he said he was said he was doing stuff with a couple companies in Japan. Wrestling? Didn't say what kind of company. Just said a couple companies in Japan, so... And that, really? like, things like that, like, even, um... Vince talked about why Taker lost. Why? He said it. Undertaker's never, never wanted to like retire undefeated. He said he always wanted to give back. Right. It wasn't Taker's decision, but in Vince's eyes, it was Brock was the only guy hot enough so to do it. Is is that like um, Andre the Giant Didn't passing wanna... the torch to Hulk oh, Hogan? Yeah. I Except think that, I, it's got to be close to it. I, mean, I don't think it's quite that level. That was a title type of thing, but... Yeah. Well, plus, before before Hogan was that big, like, obviously he was big before WrestleMania three. Yeah. But everybody still knew Andre the Giant. Right. Andre the Giant was still a commodity in, in wrestling. Well, like, granted, I, I would argue more people know who Brock Lesnar is than The Undertaker. Just because he's crossed so many different right. planes at this point with pro football for a little bit, which obviously you don't know if you're not either a big football fan or you follow wrestling or whatever. Right. But UFC, I mean, granted, a lot of those guys will probably know The Undertaker, but... Yeah. So you get my point. Yeah, I get your point. Um, he, he basically just said, which, that kind of confused me, so you were going to have Punk... you who I guess was coming off a couple losses, but was still uh, like a superstar that like, you could make a case for. He was popular enough at the time to beat The Undertaker. Right. But you have Lesnar beat him, and I see why he had Lesnar do it. But um, Vince also downplayed the whole why Lesnar's not on TV all the time. It's supposed to be like a special attraction type thing, like Paul Heyman was saying Monday. It, it almost sounded well, Paul, word for... I must have missed that. Paul Heyman was like, oh, it's like you don't have Christmas 365 days a year. Or uh, so you he's don't a, have WrestleMania every He's a every special Monday. attraction. Yep. Who? Yeah. And that's, yeah, but fine. Have him a special attraction, but the title is gone for three months, so you have nothing... That was his other... He's like, I don't think the title is what puts asses in seats. I think it's the char- people being invested in the characters. Which, okay, but if I know that... Say say I'm going to a show, I know there's going to be a title match. I'm a lot more excited for that show for the heavyweight title than right. I am if I'm seeing fucking a six-man tag match every week. Yeah, I don't... Um... But, yeah, I'm... Like I said, good for Stone Cold. He asked the right questions. Right. Um. He... I've noticed, I noticed a lot, though, from that, Stone Cold was really selfish. He he brought a lot of points back to, oh, that's like me and you and myself, and blah, 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 blah. Uh, Vince would be like, oh, yeah, Punk is, Punk is a loner. Like, he doesn't exactly have the best communication skills. And Stone Cold, well, you know, Vince, I was, I was technically a loner, and da, da. He, he brought it back to himself a lot, almost like he was, he wasn't happy that Punk was... Taking up a lot, a large you know, spot. You know the podcast. thing about Vince McMahon, you don't know the real Vince McMahon. Even when you show that you still, you see some of these um, documentary shows. Yeah. You can't tell if that's the real Vince McMahon or that is that the character Vince McMahon. Yeah. I mean, I, I remember watching that documentary when uh, Jaraz was on there, and uh, they were trying to get his character going, and that Vince McMahon seemed like. The character Vince yeah. McMahon. It didn't seem like... He he, like he doesn't put himself out there as himself. On camera. Yeah. No. So we, we don't really know what kind of guy... The, I, on, I, the only DVD I'll say where I thought you saw a lot of the same... Like, a lot of the real people... 
and not the character. 